Welcome back to the Adventures of a Disney Dad podcast. My name is Matt Brandeber, and I am a dad of three and the founder of AdventuresofADisneyDad.com, a travel agent with the Magic for Less Travel and your host. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Chip Robinson, the dad of five. Chip, how's everything going? Oh, going well. This weather up here in Northeast Ohio is confusing. It was 60 degrees Monday and Tuesday and 22 degrees when I went out to my car this morning to go to school. Yeah, we had like tornado warnings and all that kind of nonsense. And <laughs> we, we don't have that going on in the magical world of Orlando, Florida. We have a very special guest joining us straight from Orlando, sitting in Flamingo Crossings right now. Chris Allback. He's here to talk to us about the Disney College program, and we're really going to do our main segment focusing on photography at Walt Disney World. We're going to talk about hidden photo spots, the best way to get the best pictures. We'll talk about photo pass, memory maker, all that kind of stuff. We're going to get a lot of input from Chris. Chris does like a great job. So if you get a chance, make sure you follow him on Instagram. Chris, welcome to the show. And speaking of your Instagram, where what is your handle and where can people find you? I, my handle is literally just my name at Chris Allback on Instagram and, and Facebook. Awesome. And I'll make sure that we include your handle in the show notes for everybody that wants to join. But Chris, welcome to the show. We're really happy to have you. Thanks for having me. The, it's, it's kind of a funny story. You and I actually met in person through photos originally. And then I, I kind of want to tell the story because it's a little bit fun. I was down for a travel agency thing in November and I'm standing, we went to a couple of agents. We went to Mickey's very Merry Christmas party standing on main street and right underneath the Christmas tree facing the castle, getting ready for the parade. And I meet this wonderful young lady who happens to be Chris's grandmother. And we, we are talking and chatting and sure enough, I meet Chris's grandfather, Chris's mom, Chris's, I think it was your sister. And then Chris comes in their whole family. They're taking photos. They're doing videos. I think your mom has a a very well-known blog and she was taking like professional photos, I think, but it was a really cool meeting and your family was absolutely wonderful. (laughs) And so I left there and I I think I followed your mom and then followed you on Instagram and we've kind of kept in touch. And I I love following you because you're involved in the Disney college program and it's just been a cool relationship, but it's so funny that it comes back around to, I saw you posting some great photos on Instagram with some great editing. And I was like, it'd be really cool to have Chris come on because he's got such a unique experience and, and our story of how we met is just funny, but I, I think I think that was a pretty fun evening, right? It was, it was. And I think it's funny because I think I missed the whole first part. I was waiting in line at Starbucks for them. <laughs> Chris comes up at the end and he's got like the full tray of all these drinks. And by that point, I feel like I was best friends with your grandma, <laughs> which was fun. She was so shout out to your grandparents and your entire family because they were absolutely wonderful people. But I want to before we jump into the the nuts and bolts of the episode this week, we've got some some pretty big news. First, uh, at Walt Disney World, 2025 vacation packages are available now. You can get those bookings in. Reach out to me. All the links to get a quote are in the show notes. Services are completely free, as always. This is news because it's about four months earlier than normal. Typically, we see uh, 2025 packages open in June for the following year. And there were some rumors that it's possible that this week there's going to be a major universal announcement that Disney wanted to front run. I don't know if that's the case or not. We'll all find out together. But the other thing that kind of came out with all of this, as you'd expect, is that ticket prices went up. The lowest ticketed prices were previously $109 and they've gone up to $119. And then, you know, some of the more expensive dates have gone up and down a little bit throughout the year. We've also got an increase in dining plans, which to me is pretty negligible, but they were arguably expensive in the first place. The children's dining plans went up about 90 cents on both plans and the adult dining plans went up $2.13 and $3.51 for adults on the quick service and Disney dining plans respectively. Chris, because you're a current employee of the Disney the Disney company, I don't want to ask your thoughts on pricing or anything like that. So I'll <laughs> let you get off the hook for that one. All right, Chip, uh, I do want to get your opinion. Do you have any thoughts on these price, pricing increases 
Did they surprise you? What would you think generally? I was kind of shocked with the the price in the uh, dining plan more than anything. I expect the tickets to go up. I mean, they've been going up for how many years now? They just, the dining plan just started this year. Like where they re-brought it back. They raised the price from what it was when it went away before COVID. So them to, for them to raise it, I get the kids side, but to raise $3 on the, on the adult side is kind of like, all right. But it's creeping I also, pretty close to a hundred bucks. I mean, it's for the adults. I think it's like 97 and change now per day. And you And using your calculator on the website, this is probably the last year we're going to do the f- standard Disney dining play. We might do the quick service going forward, but this year with having only two adults and my daughter will turn 10 eventually. So we're going to, we're probably going to do the standard and then next year we'll probably just do quick service and go from there. What's really interesting, and we've talked about this before, the dining plans, your money is made with more kids. So if you want to save money on food at Walt Disney World and you are interested in doing a dining plan, the more kids you have that are under the age of 10, the more likely you are to save money. If you've got older kids than 10, it's not going to help you typically. And there's some agents that, you know, kind of get mad at me that I don't hard sell the dining plans more. I'm not going to, you know, advocate for something that's not a good fit for any of my guests and I'm not going to recommend it to anybody else either. Like if it's not going to save you money or you're not going to come close to breaking even, I'm not going to recommend it to you. It's just kind of the way it works for me personally. And, but the more kids you have, if you've got two or more kids, usually you're going to save some money on the dining plan, especially when you use the resort refillable mugs and all those kind of things. I think, you know, it's important. The, the interesting part though, to me was the tickets. And because I think it was the first price increase in over 400 days in terms of tickets, if I remember correctly. And Bob Iger had come out and said they really wanted to slow down like the aggressive price increases across the board. Food didn't surprise me only because like of the economy. Food is up everywhere. I, you know, you can't go to McDonald's without spending more money. So that one, you know, it didn't, it didn't surprise me as much, but I also think that they're going to want to try really hard to keep the dining plans under a hundred dollars a day. I don't, I think that's like a, (laughs) a serious, you know, red line threshold. No, um, I, I, I was shocked that they released the, the packages like that. I was expecting the cruise. I expected that anytime soon for the, the summer 2025. I kind of been waiting anticipating that, but for the packages, I mean, those normally come out in June and we're still in February. That was kind of the bigger shock. By, by the time people listen to this episode, obviously it's going to come out tomorrow, which is Friday, March 1st it's we might have an answer by yeah, the time most yeah. people are listening. Like there were rumors going around online about universal making a big announcement on Friday. They did make a, a somewhat big announcement today that we're going to talk about next, but I, I don't have any idea. And there, I've never seen any rumors specifically, but there were some things about Epic tickets and other park tickets for 2025 and who who knows i don't i don't like yeah. to speculate on that stuff but i do know that the walt disney company is uh, very precise when it comes to these things and there is undoubtedly a reason for them doing it earlier yeah that's that's the way i feel about it chris i feel like the masterminds the oz people that are all above you they know what they're doing and <laughs> and they they do it with with a very 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 specific path in mind and we're, sure. when we get through the news here, we're going to get Chris more involved. But the 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 other big thing that I wanted to touch on that pertains to Universal in terms of news is they announced today that this summer DreamWorks Land is going to open at Universal Orlando. This is huge for those of us with little kids that don't have a good experience at Universal. I've talked about this when I went on our last family trip in January that we went over to Universal and I told myself... I'm not going again until my kids are older or they fix it for little kids because there's nothing that they can really ride and the stuff that they can ride, the weights are forever. Express pass is really expensive. It's a very complicated thing when you have small children. This kind of changes the game a little bit. DreamWorks Land is going to include Shrek Swamp Meet where you can meet Shrek, Princess Fiona, and Donkey. They're going to have a Shrek's Swamp play area for little kids with a bunch of water stuff. The big headliner for my kids and my family, my daughter was ecstatic about it this morning, is the announcement of Trolls Troller Coaster, which is going to be a kid's coaster. 
I think it's going to be somewhere between Slinky Dog Dash and the Barnstormer if you're a Walt Disney World person. Pure speculation based on concept photos and stuff. They're also going to have Poppy's Playground, a Kung Fu Panda training camp play area, and then they're going to have, I think, a Puss in Boots play area. There's going to be a lot more stuff for kids, including snacks, food, all of those things. Chris, I want to ask you this question first. Okay. <clears throat> Are you, is, is Shrek still a thing? No, have not you seen really. Shrek? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't I think seen, so. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. I just haven't seen anything about it in the past like five or six years. <laughs> That's the exact answer I was expecting. I, I I feel like Shrek came out when I was in like or when Chip and I were in high school. Like it, it, it it's old, and hmm. I feel like I don't know what the gap is or you know what the connection young kids are going to have to shrek now my kids haven't watched it we tried and they were like not into it at all i i I feel like the the big draw for shrek is that kind of adult young adult humor that parents get but it's not got the like the playful nature but the trolls thing's obviously a huge hit chip what did you think about this announcement the shrek my kids actually love shrek it's a movie that plays in our car when we're driving around. So we love it. So there is a connection because I'm a big ogre. <laughs> That's probably more or less what it is. My wife's like, yeah, there's your dad on TV. <laughs> but I think the Shrek area looks sweet. Like I'm actually it does like look fired cool. up. Like I like seeing like his swamp and all of that. There's a guy on Twitter. I forget what his name is, but he goes and he takes aerial photos of all that stuff. Bio reconstruct on Twitter. Yes. He's great. And I've just been staring at those photos like, all right, I could go see Shrek. Like this, this gets me fired up. Yeah, it it does look pretty cool. And again, it's a new opportunity to have a, a spot for young kids, which I think is, is pretty awesome and should be a pretty unique opportunity. So that said, that's the news for this week. And keep an eye out for anything that might come of the universal stuff. And again, if you have a 2025 quote that you're looking for, please feel free to reach out and we'll get that started for you. And we're on to our big segment. Now, Chris, I want to talk to you first about the Disney College program. For a lot of young people, I think it is something that a lot of Disney fans know about. But maybe for the older crowd, like Chip and myself, I I mean, I'm sure it was around when we were in college, but I certainly didn't know about it at that time. So can you kind of give the basics of what the Disney college program is? Yeah. So it's, it's an internship. You're going to be working in the parks with a different role, parks, resorts, all of that. You can get college credit if you're, if your university does that. All universities are different. Mine personally, they do college credit for it. So I get getting six credits for being here for two semesters. So you get the college credit, you get the work experience, and then you get all of the perks of being a cast member. So you get the free park admission, the Disney discounts on food and merchandise, free parking in the parks if you brought your car, because you don't have to bring your car. They have buses that'll go at pretty much everywhere around Walt Disney World. So that's basically in a nutshell what it is. It's a internship, but it's also college credit and everything else. I know that like when I was in college, there was paid internships and there was unpaid internships. Does Disney do paid internships for the college program? Yes. So they're going to be paid internships. They actually just upped the pay, the starting pay for that. So it's $16 now as of like last July. Um, So $16 an hour, but you don't get your in. And then it's going to be the same for every role, except for Magic Kingdom. They get paid a 75 cent premium, I believe. And then Resort Front Desk gets a 75 percent, 75 cent premium as well. Nice. Interesting. Did you, how, why, why, why'd you apply? Like kind of what, (laughs) like, like I've seen your pictures and you've gone to Disney. I saw pictures with your, your your parents, your dad and everything. And like, so Mm -hmm. why'd you apply? Like. So I found out about the program when I was in middle school and I was like, sign me up. Let me do it now. And I was told, no, I was like, you have to be in college. And I was like, that's not fair. So when college came around, I had, it's always been on like the little back burner, something that I wanted to do at some point. And then this past, this past semester was 
probably the perfect opportunity to do it just from the standpoint of I was looking for on-campus housing and they couldn't provide that at my at my university. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this opportunity to go to Disney. Speaking of housing, does like Flamingo Crossings is I I I guess the hot spot or the spot that everybody talks about that goes to this mm-hmm. program and it's the place that people want to be, especially young folks that are, you know, working in the parks. Is that included with the Disney College program or is that something you guys have to pay for yourselves? So we do have to pay for it, but it comes out of our paychecks. So we don't really see that money and it's makes it almost it almost makes it feel included, even though it's mm-hmm. not. That's that Disney math, right? It's yeah, pretty exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. But it's it's amazing. It's like it's almost like an apartment. It's an apartment complex, but it's almost like a resort. Very, very cool. For those that aren't familiar, like what's the application process like for someone that maybe is a freshman in college that's interested in and loves Disney and in joining the program? And how competitive is it? It is. I'll start. I'll start with the freshman in college. The main thing to know is you have to have completed at least one semester of college before you can apply. So that's the first thing. The application process itself, you start with Uh, just applying and they will send you a web-based interview. That's like a, it's like a 50 question multiple choice test to see how you would handle situations and your personality type and everything like that. If you make it past that, I think when I did that, it was about 45 minutes later that I scheduled a phone interview. That phone interview was a week after that, took about five to seven minutes. It was not very long. At least mine wasn't. I just talked about why I wanted to do the program, what my favorite park is, and my prior experience. And then if there was any roles that I did not want. With that one, I said, I would like like to be done with food and beverage for a little while. Since, since middle school, I've been working in food and beverage. So I wanted a break. <laughs> but yeah, after that phone interview, about a week later, that's when I got the acceptance. As, awesome. for, as for competition, it used to be a lot more competitive. Now Disney is hiring so many college program participants. So it seems to be way less competitive than it used to be. Well, kind of going back a little bit, what's mm-hmm. your current year in college? Like, obviously you're, you're down there. What, what, what's, where are you at? And you're studying, what do you study? Yeah, for sure. So I'm, I'm a junior studying digital marketing and I've been throwing in the photography double major, maybe minoring, maybe not doing it at all just a little bit of everything. (laughs) That'll be a good segue, but I'm not going to use that opportunity yet. Just because I want (laughs) to, I want to, I want to dig into the college program a little bit more. I, I, are you seeing like a shift in, you you mentioned that they're hiring a lot more in the college program. Are you Mm -hmm. seeing a shift of like less full part-time staff that are not in the college program and more of a shift towards hiring more college young kids? I do sort of see that just because we are, we're easy to hire for them. So I've noticed there's a lot more CPs now, but it's also, I think they're in a hiring freeze right now. Don't mm-hmm. quote me on that, <laughs> but I've, yeah, I've noticed a lot more CPs than part-time, full-time coming in. Yeah, it, it definitely does. It doesn't seem like, at least from what you read online or hear about that, there's a lack of demand for the college program. Definitely That's not. Making it, yeah, it, it's more of an increase in available openings. So correct, to speak. correct. And if you, uh, if you go if you go over to Flamingo Crossing, you can see they keep building on these these things that look like dorms, but they're it's a resort. I've seen pictures of it, and those just keep coming up. So they're going to keep hiring to put people in it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and it works well for them too because for me myself, but a lot of other people, they're giving they're paying us to work here, but then we're putting all of our money back into the company when we're buying merchandise <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I, I well, and, and the big thing that you always see on social media is like people being able to go to cast cast connections or whatever it's called and getting, you know, huge bags of chicken fingers for ten dollars. <laughs> like all oh, they're in my fridge right now. <laughs> there, that's so great. There it is. There it is. That that to me is like the dream. Like Chip and I in college would have just <laughs> Oh my gosh. I oh my yeah. I, they'll, I last you, gotta... they'll last you like a month. <laughs> Those bags oh are big. Gosh. If they uh, if they had like ten dollar you know mini corn dogs from Casey's, I would I would be in heaven. I would be in heaven. <laughs> they do so not have what, what 
what roles did you apply for? Obviously, and you could say what role you have if you're allowed to, but what roles I know you, I know from things I've heard in the past that you can apply for different things, but you're not guaranteed anything. So, so yeah, they, they did change that. When I applied, you had no say in what role you got. They said, if you had suggestions or like, what would you be interested in? But they, they said in the phone interview, you are not, you are not picking your role. You will be placed where we want you. Okay. So I really wanted either Jungle Cruise Skipper or Photo Pass. Resort concierge is what I am now. Not was not on my list at all. But I will say <laughs> I'm very glad I got it. <laughs> yeah, I I safe to say you've enjoyed your experience overall. I have 100. percent Yeah. When because you're you're doing two semesters, I think you mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have to do two semesters, or can you do more than two semesters? Is there a limitation? There is a limitation. The shortest program you can do is about three months. Um, so you could do like a summer program if you wanted. You are not allowed to be employed as an intern for over a year. Okay. So July would be my cutoff. Gotcha. So do you, you can go back, right? After you graduate, isn't, is that still an option? You can, yes. So you can apply for another program. You have just have to be out of the program for at least six months. But you can also go part-time, full-time straight after your program if you wanted to stay. Oh, nice. Interesting. I guess you you probably get this a lot, you know, from your family. And maybe I'm going to help your mom out here on this. Do you have any thoughts on what your future plans are? Do you want to work for the Walt Disney Company? Do you want to kind of go off and do photography and stuff? What's your What's your general thought process, thought process there? I want to do everything. I honestly don't know. I'm definitely going to finish school. That's number one priority. So whether or not that's online or in person, if it's here or if it's back home, I literally have, I can't figure that out. (laughs) Have you gotten to the point where central Florida is like home to you? Like, do you want to stay, even if you're not with the Walt Disney company, do you want to stay in central Florida? I do. I love it here. It's amazing. I lived here in July when it's like the worst weather and it honestly didn't bother me as much as people say it bothers them. And that could just be, I'm five minutes from Disney. I'm just not going to let it bother me, but (laughs) I love it here. (laughs) And you're originally from North Carolina, correct? Correct. Correct. It's not so bad, but they, they, it gets, it gets cold. They get snow like that. They do. They do. I go to Appalachian state, which is in the mountains in North Carolina. Um, oh, yeah. So we get a lot of snow and it gets down to like the teens. Sometimes it's in the negatives. Uh, I do miss that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you miss it? I love snow. I love snow. Oh. I'll I'll trade you, man. I'll come, I'll come spend time in Flamingo <laughs> Crossings. You can come watch my kids and, and we'll, we'll call it a day. Yeah. A hundred percent. So what, what would your dream role be if I were to say, Chris, you get a dream role as a CP. What is it? As Ooh. since you've been there, not 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 what you wanted to do before, but as you since you've been there now, uh, what are we going on? Eight months about about since July. Uh, yeah, nine months. Um, yeah. Nine months almost. Yeah, definitely. Dream role has to be resort concierge, which is what I'm in right now. You get you're not in the parks, so you're not getting tired of the parks. So when I go, when I'm off, I can go enjoy them. You're in the air conditioning, which is another big plus. But where I am, I'm at All-Star Movies. And there's so many first-time families that are coming to the All-Stars specifically that I get to sit there while they check in for an hour and just plan their vacation and help them decide where to go, what day, based on weather or at the time park reservations and when fireworks are and they're just sitting there all excited, asking so many questions, and they're they're just like blown away by where they are. I feel like that's that's the magic, right? Like that's part of the reason why I started becoming a travel agent was just because mm-hmm. that's it's just as fun to plan it and experience it for somebody else as 100%. it is to experience it for yourself. And right? you don't get that in other roles like attractions where you see them for five seconds and you tell them to go on the ride. So that's why. <laughs> I think resort concierge is probably the dream role. Now yeah, I'm going to ask a question. Awesome. I'm going to ask a question that goes back to Matt and I's kind of discussion in the past. How many people, like what would you say percentage come in 
and don't have anything planned. Oh, like, like a, is this? We debate, Chris. I we would... debate this a lot on the show. This is, this is a okay, really important well, point. Are you ready Put a for percentage your answer? on it? Yeah. <laughs> I would say thirty to forty percent. Really? I have no I, idea. I, what I feel doing. like it's. Oh. I feel like it's much higher than that. A lot. So there's going to be there's there's a big chunk. I feel like it gets split into three groups. There's the group that has no idea what they're doing. They booked it and they're going to figure it out as they're going. Then you have the group that did a little bit of research. They've talked to friends and family. They know they know what they want to do. They have a list. But then there's the group that's like, I know everything. I, I'm going to be here at 701. I'm going to be here at 707. <laughs> and if it's not going to be that way, then I'm done. <laughs> See, I, I've always felt like that group, that latter group of the, the very experienced planners is like less than 30%. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a huge chunk of people that like have not even downloaded the app. I, yeah. <laughs> how, how often, do, how often do you see that where somebody walks in and they don't even know that they can check in on the app or they don't, they don't like, maybe they don't even have it downloaded. Do you see that like daily? A hundred percent, almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's not even it's not just one person it's multiple multiple groups but it's that great experience where you can show them how the app works and they're blown away by oh my gosh you can make a lightning lane for this mm -hmm. oh my gosh i can unlock the door with my phone <laughs> so when they don't have it it is kind of fun and that that is like a really anybody listening to this obviously has downloaded the app if you're this far into planning where you're listening to a podcast. But this is going to be my quick PSA for the episode. Spring break is right around the corner. And if you are going to Walt Disney World on spring break, do not wait until 6.45 in the morning to buy Genie Plus. Please set an alarm shortly after midnight, wake up and buy it. Because if you wake up at 6.45 and it's sold out, you are going to be in pain. So like that to me is like the worst experience somebody could have. And I've had guests have this happen before where they wake up, you know, 730, 745. Not only have they missed their chance to book a lightning lane, but like Magic Kingdom is sold out. And everybody always thinks that they're going to be able to buy it whenever. And like, just don't do that to yourself. Just set an alarm, wake up, buy it, and then go back to sleep. So that's my yeah. quick PSA. Spring break. Spring break. Nuts. Not just well, spring break. It's going to be like we just had marathon weekend and we were selling out again. <laughs> yeah. And, and gosh, like that's that's the truth. Like I do it on every trip, no matter what day I'm there, just out of we're habit, because be, I don't want to I don't want to risk it. We're but like the, the next the month morning. and a half is going to be nuts. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I, I, the crowd, people don't understand how crowded it's going to be for the next month and a half because everybody's like, Oh, you know, there was an article the other day, Disney's a ripoff or, you know, there was a, a guy that went viral all over social media that he didn't download the app and he was ripping on a bunch of rides and restaurants and whatever. And like people see that stuff and they think that that's what they're going to experience. And it's not at all. You're it's going to be crowded you're going to have a very good time, but if you go there without planning anything or you sleep in and that kind of thing, it's, it's, it's going to be a rough one. So that's my quick PSA for everybody is just wake up and buy your Genie Plus, please, for me. The last thing to wrap up the Disney College program, Chris, is what kind of advice do you have for people that are aspiring to be in the Disney College program, whether it be kind of preparing yourself to be the best applicant or what are some things that you wish you knew before you did your Disney college program? I would say the biggest advice is even if you, even if you've never been to Disney, don't know anything about it and you still want to do it, you can still apply. They're not looking for Disney experts. They're just looking for people that are willing and excited and have that almost that Disney personality. That's the biggest advice that I could give. And as far as like things that I wish I knew before, there's not very much that I was shocked by when I got here. I watched a lot of videos though. So <laughs> I, that's another thing of advice. Maybe watch some YouTube videos and text the Disney program and programs, Instagram with questions and stuff like that. Did, awesome. did you know, did you know your roommates at all before? Or have nope. you had roommates move in and out? I guess that might be, you've been there long. Yes, yes, yes. I did not know my roommates before. 
I met them the day I moved in. Then I've had, I'm trying to think, at this point, I've had four people move out and four, up to four, I have four more people move in. So I'm the oldest one in the apartment. <laughs> so when it comes to like, as we transition here into photos and photography and all that stuff, tell us a little bit about your personal history with Disney. I mentioned a little bit about your family. I know your family absolutely loves to go. Have you been going your entire life or how did your, how did your Disney journey start? Yeah, we've been going pretty much my entire life. I don't remember my first trip, which obviously I think I was like one. That's um, a good yeah, sign. Yeah, exactly. We've been going my entire life. Come, I'm trying to think like middle school, high school, we would go for the Halloween and Christmas party. Sometimes when they'd have like the villains after hours, we'd go to that. Uh, so closer to like high school and everything, we would pretty much just do the parties with like a full Disney trip every once in a while. Now that I'm here, they come all the time. <laughs> As they should, right? Yes, yes. And how, like, I guess, how frequently would you say you see your family? Since I've been here, they've been here at like once or twice a month. It seems. Now I feel like you, you're trying to bat them away. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'm trying to think. They came in September. I don't. They did come in October for the Halloween party. Matt, you met them in November. Maybe. Madam, yep, yeah, November for the Christmas party. And right after they came back from that, they were gone for about a week and they came back for Christmas. So <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's you, great. you guys did you did your full family Christmas in Orlando, right? We did, yes. That was very, very different. That was the first time that I had that all of us had done Christmas outside of my mom's house. That's awesome, but unique and and all of those things because you know it, it can be nostalgic to to be at home too. So I can understand that. So let, let's transition a little bit here into the main segment of what we want to talk about today, which is photography. I've mentioned it a hundred times already. Chris takes amazing photos and does a, an amazing job editing. What what are some of your best? I, I guess let's talk about best parks first. What do you think is the best park for photos? If you're going to try and take either family photos or photos of different areas of the parks. Ooh, that is a great question. I would say Magic Kingdom is going to be my favorite park for photos just because I like Main Street and uh, really ma mainly Main Street. That's my favorite place to take photos. <laughs> Animal Kingdom is really good. I haven't really gone often to go get photos there but animal kingdom is really good because everything's so themed really all of i mean all the parks are great for photos <laughs> those are those are probably the main two gotcha what tips do you have for people taking photos at night because for me it's something that's really difficult to do you do it really well so i will always i'll always use night mode as long as i can as long as i can stand there and not move around and stuff like that i'll always use night mode that's going to be my first first tip. Secondly, I always will focus on the subject that I want. You just on the iPhone, you just double click to focus and then I will mess with the exposure. Cuz I believe cuz I feel like when you're messing with the exposure, you can you can see what you're about to take. Pick what you like and then just take the photo and make sure you stand still. <laughs> That's the hardest part on the iPhone. It is like 100%. My my old hands are too wobbly. So now the next question I want to ask you, what do you think is your best ride or your favorite ride to take photos of? Of Big Thunder or Space Mountain are my two favorites. Space Mountain because especially at night you can get Tron in the background and um, sometimes you can get like the speedway around and everything. And then all of the lights around it give it so much color. So Space Mountain at night specifically. However, in the day, I really, really like Big Thunder Mountain just because of all the detail in the mountain. Yeah, that that's a fun one. Chip, do you what, have uh, like a, a favorite ride that you like to take photos of when you're at the parks? You know what? I don't know if I... You know, probably Safari is probably my favorite thing to take photos of. I don't know why. Just being on, seeing the animals and especially like you see like the, the like the elephants out playing things mm -hmm. like that that's probably my favorite maybe second would probably be slinky dog slinky like dogs just, 
getting getting some of those photos, especially well, number one, I love the backyard theme. But when I'm on the ride, I try and get a couple pictures of Galaxy's Edge just to see that in there too. So, that those are probably my two favorite. What about you? Slinky Dog's my Slinky Dog's my favorite. Galaxy's Edge is probably second, just because there's some really unique opportunities, and we'll, we'll talk about tips later. But one that I've mentioned previously is if you get that last reservation at Ogus Cantina, you get Galaxy's Edge basically to yourself, like nobody. And you can walk like the cast members back there are fantastic and they'll let you walk around and take as many pictures as you want to take as you're starting to like move towards the exits. And you can get some really awesome photos with the Millennium Falcon with nobody, Kylo Ren's ship with nobody around. And there's there's some really I've got several of them hanging on my wall behind my camera that I've taken there that are just they're just really cool. But the the other one that I, I think is is really unique is tron and i've always tried to get that blurry ride vehicle photo chris have you ever tried to get that shot like where the light cycle is coming through at night and it blurs kind of in blue or white i've tried i can't get it i always miss the (laughs) i always miss it when it's coming back (laughs) i know i know exactly what photo you're talking about too I, (laughs) i i feel like that's one and i even downloaded an app to try and figure it out with the exposure to try and get that like where it's basically taking the picture for a longer period of time, similar to the way that they did like good photographers get photos of the fireworks, which I've seen you've done successfully too, Chris, right? Yeah. You've, you've done some really good jobs with the job with the photos, like what of the fireworks, what's your trick with the firework photos? The firework photos. It's just taking a bunch all at once with my actual camera. I'll literally just have, I'll, click the little continuous shutter button, hold the button down and it'll take like 30 or 40. Ah, that's a good way to do it. I, I like to do videos and then screenshot the videos. Yes. I found that works. I mean, it's not, it's not as great as like what you see on social media or from someone like Chris, but like to me, it looks a little bit better, but I I've started to just get to the point where I give up <laughs> on trying to photograph the fireworks. <laughs> I downloaded an app the last time. Actually, it was the time I was there and I met you, Chris. I downloaded an app. It was like two ninety nine from the app store that I had read what's going to be great for taking photos of fireworks. And I like I could not for the life of me figure it out. <laughs> I have been messing around with like on the iPhone live photos. If you do that, then you have that choice between the little clips or you can turn it into a long exposure and it kind of blurs the firework. Ooh. Yeah. Chip, do you ever try like... I feel like we're we're dealing with kids so much during the fireworks that we don't really get much of an opportunity to do that. I, I'm not the photographer in my family. Actually, I, I am an Instagram husband, but I am not a, I complain about it every single time, but I am not a, I'm not the photographer. I'm trying to get better. That's the one yeah. thing I, I, I've got to do. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not the photographer. <laughs> and, and Chris, you mentioned you, you have a camera, but you primarily shoot on an iPhone. Is it a 14 or a 15? It's a 15. Yeah. So yeah. I, the one thing I'll mention, cause I've, I've had a lot of people ask this question about a GoPro. Mm-hmm. I, I bought the latest GoPro. I think it's the 12. I, I think it's the 12 and it's fantastic for Walt Disney world, especially during the day. But at mm-hmm. night, my experience has not been great. It, it's just too overexposed because of all the lights, particularly on main street and stuff. It just, the, the pictures don't look great. The video doesn't look great. And there's also problems with trying to get fish eye out of it. So if you're That's not familiar the thing, with the I'm GoPro, I'm not a huge fan of GoPro. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's got this natural because the, vi, you know, the field of view is so wide. It's almost, I think it's like 160, almost 180 degrees, but to get that view, it's got this fish eye effect. And you can tell if you've seen a GoPro video, you'll know that it's a GoPro video because of the fish eye. And it takes more time, like when you're editing and stuff to try and pull that out. And the iPhones are so good now with photos, that you don't really need a professional camera. But the one thing I wanted to ask you is because I, I know you do have a camera and I know your mom uses a professional camera for her blog and her photos and stuff. Do you think that there's an advantage there? And, and if so, are there any cameras in particular that you like or recommend for people? It's so... a loaded question. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's it's funny because I say I'm a photographer and all this. I don't know a ton about cameras. 
I know okay. how to use I know how to use mine, but I don't know about like really any of the other ones. I know I always I always hear the same things. Uh, Nikon is really good for photos, and Canon is really good for photos. But Sony is what you want to use if you want video. Interesting. Yes, but the reason I go back to the iPhone so much is because it does great photos and great video, and it's small, and I can carry it in my pocket. I'll just plug a fuel rod in. With the 15, now I can plug an SD card or a hard drive in and shoot straight to that. So it kind of like eliminates the need for a big camera. Yeah, and it's you own it already, which is the other big part of it. Like cameras are so expensive that you're you're not getting a good one under like two thousand dollars. Hundred percent. So <laughs> like you you've already got the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, you add in the lenses and like there's a different lens for all these different things and. Part of the reason why people like Chris get so familiar with their own camera is that you're not buying a new one frequently. You're buying a new one every 10, 10 years or something. Like the technology doesn't change a huge, you know, amount. So you mm. don't need to shop for one very often. I think it's been a lot of people's experience. I've gotten very, very used to my ca uh, my camera. And funnily enough, it's I bought it from my grandma. So. <laughs> All right, Chris. So I got some like memory maker, kind of those kind of questions when you see the people in the green, mm -hmm. where, where's the best, who, where, where's the best spot to get those photos taken? Like if I want to go to the castle, mm -hmm. do I want to start early in main street? Do I want to go mid? Do I want to be up by the statue? What, what's kind of your, your take? I mean, it really, it really depends on what kind of photo do you want? Do you want main street in it? Do you want just the castle? I never recommend that they have they always have ones standing like right in between Casey's and the ice cream parlor. And yeah. the only reason I say I don't like it is because the castle itself, it's on a tilt. So the photographer has to tilt the camera a little bit to make it look like the castle is straight because in the ground, it's not actually straight. So, but that angle that, that, that one spot, I feel like it's really hard to get a straight castle and family standing up straight. <laughs> I, I feel like Chip and I are going to be standing there looking, trying to. So, uh, do you, do you know do you know the history this. behind behind that? Like why it's not straight? I I don't think I've ever heard. Probably, that. probably settling. I, I honestly, yeah, I don't know exactly why it is. Uh, maybe it's similar. Have you heard the story at the Contemporary when they put it together? The rooms were put in, and then the uh, steel expanded, and they couldn't pull them out. Yeah, <laughs> I. I which is an interesting story for sure. And now I feel like I'm going to, it's going to be one of those things that now I'm going to see it for sure. Um, you can't, and, you can't see, I, I, I don't see it. I only see okay. it in the photos. <laughs> well, now, and now I'm going to go back and look at all my photos. <laughs> I'm, I'm it, <laughs> Which way is it? Leave? Does it tilt to the left or to the right? Which one do I got? <laughs> to the left a little bit. <laughs> right. That's interesting. The, the, and for those that don't know, a memory maker can be purchased with vacation packages it pre-trip it's 185 dollars while you're on your trip or post trip it's more expensive so they encourage you to to buy it before your trip and it is the best money in my opinion that you can spend at walt disney world it's the only add-on that i always recommend to people because you, it just makes getting pictures so much easier with your families if you're on an adults only or solo trip maybe you know it's not as worth it but if you're going with your kids there are people in green. These are photo pass photographers. They're bright neon green at all the parks and you will not miss them. And they're everywhere. The waits are not very long. They're usually no more than five minutes if there's people in line and they'll take as many pictures as you want. They've got magic shots where they can kind of graphic in some cool things and they're at all the parks and they're, at, they're literally everywhere. I feel like there's good photo, photo pass photographers all over the place and you can take as many photos as you want to. And you get them for that $185. You also get all your ride photos, which I think is a great deal. But Chris, in terms of the photo pass spots, are there any kind of hidden or lesser known ones that you would recommend people check out? Yeah. So ha have you seen the photo pass spot that's in Galaxy's Edge where they'll actually give you a lightsaber? It's about, I think it's, I think it's next to Ogus Cantinas, but I, I never see anybody waiting in line for it. Because I don't think they, I don't think people know that it's there, especially mm -hmm. since, yeah, especially since Galaxy's Edge, you're not wearing the bright green. You're looking for a, you're looking for a, a civilian of Batu that's carrying a camera. 
yeah i've i've seen it other people do it and mm -hmm. like when i've seen it it's not been with my kids and then i feel like when i'm there with my kids batu is just like like bat crap crazy <laughs> so there, you know there's never like really an opportunity to try and do it but that that's a good one for sure because they'll do some fun photo shoots with the lightsabers and and in fact they added there are photo shoot packages that you can you can pay for i think they're 35 or 45 dollars for like a half hour where you get uh, a specific photo pass photographer attached to your family you can do it in galaxy's edge now which is a new thing and they'll give you the lightsabers and stuff like that it's like your own your family's private you know photo session except that they they don't like block other people that are in the park and it's you know during the hours of operation and stuff but you can also do them at the castle and a few other areas but that's a cool opportunity too but that that's a great spot are there any others that really stick out to you the other the other the other one that sticks out to me is going to be over by the hub in that grassy area, the area that they close for the fireworks for VIPs, they always have photo pass photographers in there. The nice thing about that is you don't have all the people that are behind you on the street and everything. Since mm -hmm. you're in that grassy area, they can kind of hide the people a little better. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> My mind's blown. <laughs> I didn't know you could get, get a picture with a lightsaber. And, you know, oh, like, yeah. And if you're looking for a... the photo sessions with a photo pass photographer, that's on the website. It's capture your moment is what it's called. Yeah. And, and they're, they're well worth it too. Like they're not overly expensive and it's, mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to, to get some great photos with your kids. There's another one in the hub grass that I think is really cool that we've done and it's the, the big zoom shot. So it's in oh, front of yeah. the ice cream parlor. And so if you go in that hub area, there's, I feel like there's never people waiting there because that's where we go and eat dinner. Usually like we'll take the kids there and, have Casey's or whatever and let them run around. But there's always a photo pass photographer there. And on the roof above the ice cream parlor, there's a camera that you'll stand on the hub grass and the photo pass photographer will tell you where to look. And you look up and there's this huge zoom photo that they'll take that gets like the entire hub area of magic kingdom, the castle, all of it. And it'll be a huge photo and you can zoom all the way down and in and out on you and your family and it it's pretty cool. And again, I need it's to try that like, one. yeah, it it I, I thought that one was a lot of fun. My wife and I did that one at an after hours too, I think. But we've that, done that uh, with the kids. They have that a, a cool in photo. Galaxy's Edge as well. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Millennium Falcon. If you're looking at Millennium Falcon, it's up on the ledge right to the left before you'd walk down to the Millennium Falcon. We did it a couple years ago. Yeah. That's and, interesting. And then I will say that go ahead. They're getting really creative with their photo pass. Have you tried the one that's in Epcot where you're standing around the ball and then it gets like a 360 degree shot? Oh yeah, my gosh, not... I have it. I need to I'm check that out. I'm too tall for it. I'm too tall for it. Oh no. <laughs> so we did We did it with all of my kids and my one son, I think Axel was too little or maybe Ken, Kelly was holding Axel, I don't know, and Rylan was too little, but like it's like you could see like my nose down. Like I was just too, like I just needed to back up a little bit and I would have been fine. But it's the same way if I go on Spaceship Earth, my head, I miss my, the headshot on Spaceship Earth too. <laughs> Don't sit on the back left hand corner. I found that out. I did a backstage tour and they said that the camera doesn't work there. Ah, that's an interesting tip. On that's on Spaceship Earth, right? That's on Spaceship Earth, yeah. That's fun. I, I feel like the, the new spot that I have not been to yet that I really want to is uh, Epcot at night in the new yeah. World Celebration area. The photos that I've seen coming out of there with those lights are really, really cool. Have you had a chance to go over there and, and take a bunch of photos, Chris? I've had a chance to go over there. It's been packed every single time I've been there. Mm. So I definitely want to try and find a non-peak time to go try that. Yeah. But now with Flower and Garden Festival, they just put that figment topiary up. Yeah. And that, that was oh, a really yeah. cool thing to take a picture of. I'm not, <laughs> not a figment fan by any, by any means, but it was really cool. Chris, you and I are together on the the not figment fans, uh, and but it, it was a cool topiary. But I posted it, I think the first day I I had seen a picture of it online, and I was like, I I can't I can't do it. But there there's a <laughs> I um, could have picked something else. Yeah, right, right. Well, and but there's another spot I and I can't remember where specifically it is, but it's it's in front of the ball, 
at some at some spot that is Asha from Wish. That That's looks really right. Cool lit up. It's right when you walk in. As soon as you scan yeah. your ticket, it's like where they have all the. It's where they have the festival sign and everything. Yeah, that that one to me was absolutely gorgeous. I was showing my wife a picture of that earlier. Oh, at today. night. Yeah. Yeah, at the, night. Her thing lit up. That was sweet. Yeah, it's it's a really cool photo opportunity there. And and as a side note, and maybe a hot take, Wish is going to be one of the biggest movies this year on Disney Plus. Whenever it does come out. I've heard that they like keep pushing it back because they're doing well in sales. It was originally supposed to come out sometime in March on Disney Plus, and now I've heard April. But like all all the young families are waiting for it to come out on Disney Plus, and they don't want to pay the thirty dollars to buy it. It is it is an awesome movie, and it's going to be like Encanto, where once it hits Disney Plus, it is going to go bananas for <laughs> for little kids and families. The music, it's got some bangers. It it is good. Chris, have you seen that movie yet? I have not seen it. Um, I, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you'll be hooked. Disney Plus. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I you will you will be hooked on it. And I Chip, I, you I know I've asked you that before, so I know you haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. Uh, like we we have those songs on repeat, just like <laughs> we did in Kanto in my house. And it, I, I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna be a good one. So whenever that hits Disney Plus, be ready to just get bombarded with wish stuff because it's gonna be i'm gonna go, I'm go back a little bit like talking about photo opportunities especially with the, the photo pass people anytime at night in a low like like we were back by barnstormer mm-hmm. and they had some sort of picture or we were taking a picture but they had like christmas lights but they were just like white lights this was during the summer so but it like made it was a cool picture we took with our kids and they're like we had no line there's taken they took like a five minute photo shoot of my kids and um number one i think we were the first ones there so they're trying to figure it out and the lighting and everything but if you go where there's it's just kind of a quiet area and you find a photo pass per, person you're gonna you could have your own mini shoot really I was that's, the, that's really cool too is that the photo photos pass photographers even if they've got a line they spend a good amount of quality time with your family and with your kids you know, when it comes to the magic shots, you know, they'll have the kids hold their hand open and then you go and look at the photo and Tinkerbell's in their hand, things like that, that are like kind of what makes Disney special, I think. And they do a really good job of that. But to, to go back to Chip's point about lesser known spots and getting photos without crowds, Chris, like what, what are kind of some secret times or secret hacks or anything like that that you have for getting pictures in areas without a ton of people in them. Mm-hmm. Really, it's just luck. I feel like just finding it, like I'll be standing in a random spot. I'll be standing in the middle of Galaxy's Edge and it's packed and I'm trying to get this one picture and I'll turn around and look back and there's just this empty spot. So you run to it, you grab the picture and you run back because you know it's going to fill up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I do. I mean like that's how I get like the shots on Liberty over near Hall of Presidents and everything. You'll see all these people leaving Haunted Mansion and that area. But then once they clear out, you have like 10 seconds to get a picture before somebody else come, comes walking through. <laughs> do, you, do you ever, I, I get a lot of DMs from people asking how certain photographers that are really well followed on social media, how they get empty park photos. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned the one about Galaxy's Edge about doing you know, the Ogus Cantina reservation. I think that that kind of works everywhere in terms of getting the last reservation at one of the parks or the for first sure, reservation, sure. you know, cause then you can kind of wander and there's not a lot of people, mm-hmm. but it, am I correct that the majority of the time it's the photographer is just kind of hanging out until they're starting to get pushed out. Right. A hundred percent. It's actually yeah. a really funny story. Cause we, this is what we used to do. My mom would uh, make a reservation for Be Our Guest because that Be Our Guest specifically has reservations that are five minutes before the park closes. Mm-hmm. So you enjoy your meal, you kind of make it go as long as possible. And then when you're done, you're walking slowly down through Fantasyland and out to Main Street. And then you start taking these pictures. And we would stay because this is back when the parks would close at like midnight. We, we would easily stay until like 2 a.m. Like, I remember, I remember the one time, there was one time we were there taking pictures on Main Street and it was me and my siblings sitting on the, sitting on the street and security 
finally told us it's time to go and walk <laughs> us out. <laughs> And and that, but that really is the way that they do it. And you you don't even have to make the reservation. Like I've seen no, people no. like, because, you know, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the rule is that up until the park closes, you can get in line for a ride. Right. Correct. Correct. So if you, if you go, for example, and there's like a one hour wait for Big Thunder Mountain, mm -hmm. you have park closes at 9 PM and there's a one hour wait, you're getting in line at five till nine waiting an hour in the queue and then you yeah. come out of there and it's it's pretty empty right 100 percent. plus that could get you into the back of the park too so yeah. you have and all that park to walk through that and that's the beauty of the august cantina reservation or or doing it that way is that but or any ride back there like rise of the resistance is you get to walk through the entirety of hollywood studios on your way out and see everything yes yes and you know, I guess the same would be said for Slinky Dog. You could jump in that queue, which is probably two hours or something ridiculous at the end of the night. And then, you know, meander on out and take as many photos as you want. But that's that's really like the hack of how those people are doing those things. It is. Like, it make, is. It's yeah. getting harder and harder as the as more more people start realizing it and start staying mm -hmm. in the parks. You'll start seeing you'll you'll see a lot of people just kind of hanging out. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and, but if you can manage it, like a lot of people with families that, you know, that's not really going to be your thing, but is the same true for the rope drop folks? Like I've heard people talk on social media about how at some of the parks you get let in at a certain time before the parks open. Are you familiar with how that works? And could you explain it to people that maybe aren't? It helps that I'm resort concierge because I have to know all that. That's wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, the park, the park will have its opening time. 30 minutes before that, that's going to be the early entry time for resort guests. So they'll let everybody in about 45 minutes to an hour before the official open time. For Hollywood Studios, that Main Street will be open. Main Street USA will be open. Animal Kingdom will kind of open that area before the tree, like before the Tree of Life. And Epcot, Epcot, you can't get past Spaceship Earth. There's not very much room there. But about 30 minutes when early entry starts, that's when you'll start seeing all these resort guests walking into the into the attractions and everything, which kind of clears it out a little more. So you can get those early morning park pictures. So that yeah, yeah. So you can get those early morning park pictures. I recommend I recommend being there as soon as they'll let you in. Because rope oh. drop, if Magic Kingdom opens at nine, early entry is at 8 30, be there at like 7 30. Because they'll let you in. And then once early entry starts then you can get those good pictures and at magic kingdom they've got starbucks open the shops are open like you can everything's open yeah mm -hmm. i'll yeah. tell you i'll mm -hmm. tell you what it's it's really nice and quiet because they everybody lines up like they're going to tomorrowland and mm -hmm. we had we weren't in a rush we were actually we didn't know that it was only you could only get into fantasy land for the first half hour mm -hmm. so we were trying to like we were we wanted to rope drop uh <laughs> jungle cruise so we're sitting over there and there's like two people over there and they're like, Hey, this doesn't open till actually nine, but we had castle photos and there's nobody in it. But meanwhile, yeah. there's probably 4,000 people waiting in line to go For Tomorrowland. Yeah. Tomorrowland. Yeah. <laughs> so before we wrap up the photos, I want to ask one last question and it's whether or not you have any like must try photos for like, let's say it's a family coming in. What's the, the must try photo spot for you? Is it, is it the hub grass at magic kingdom? Or if you could pick one spot, where would you tell a family that they have to get their photo taken? If I could pick one spot, it would have to be halfway down main street. So you get the castle, you get the streets on the side or the buildings on the side. And then you can really kind of just work your camera around to hide as many people as possible. And if you, if you know anything about like Photoshop or anything, it's gotten really, really easy to just kind of Photoshop people out. But the less oh. people you have in the actual photo, the easier it is to do that. Um, so yeah, that would be like the increase main that spot. blurry effect, right? Exactly. Exactly. Effect. Exactly. Um, so that'd be like the main spot. However, the must try photo that I would be, I would, I would recommend is I've been, I've been really into these pictures that I've been taking where I'll flip my phone camera upside down 
so that the camera is on the bottom. And I'll put that straight onto the, onto the ground and get the subject that I want, but then it kind of blurs the people. Oh, very um, cool. And I've been, very cool I've been really liking how those go. <laughs> yeah. The, go, Chip, I want to ask you the same question. If you, if you take the castle out of it, what's your favorite spot to get a photo with your family? Oh, we are big Hollywood studios fans. So I like, and honestly, I like it at night is when you see the Chinese theater. We love doing that photo. There's another one that I will say is a hidden gem that, that you've got to get in line for is the tangled, like holding the lantern up. That's one that you've, you've got to sacrifice a little bit of time, but you get to hold the light up. That's pretty cool. The other one I will tell you, and I don't like the fountain on the backside of Spaceship Earth. I like getting the front side of Spaceship Earth. A lot of people like going to the backside because you get the fountain, and I like the front side. I don't know why. I just that's what you always see. I think, or I you always see the mm-hmm. fountain, and I, I'm not a big fan the fountain guy. I don't know, but I like the front side of Spaceship Earth. But Hollywood Studios at night, right right down the Chinese theater because you get all the neon. Mm-hmm. and you see all the different colors and it, sometimes it gets blurred out but then you see that just kind of those those colors on the side it's it's really cool so um, did you do you prefer that do you prefer the um, chinese theater or do you miss the sorcerer hat i do miss the sorcerer hat i i i love the sorcerer hat because sorcerer mickey's awesome he's probably the best mickey in my opinion <laughs> I, I think there there could be an argument on this show partic- in particular that we are MGM Studios people oh, through and 100%. through. So okay. I, I miss the Ninja Turtles and you know the Sorcerer's Hat and all all the things. The the one thing I'll mention that is uh, I always recommend families try and get one photo at least with each of the four icons. I think that's important, just especially if you don't go very often and or it's your first family trip. You know that kind of forces you to go to Animal Kingdom too, which I think can be important. But the the one that we love the most, and my kids would kill me if I didn't mention is every trip we try and take photos in front of Tower of Terror. And there's some really, really great shots when when it's lit up at night. And they've got some fun props like a luggage suitcase and things like that that you can take photos with that are really cool. But it, it is pretty iconic that entire you know sunset yeah. strip and and everything else getting a photo there so definitely something to check out and chris i think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the night with our our rapid fire round okay. and so we're gonna talk about some of some of your favorites here and chip i'm not sure if you have the list in front of you so i'm gonna i'm gonna i don't know you. okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna run through it really quickly we try and, and do something fun like a little game or a little quiz with with our guests on the show so rapid fire what is your favorite, all-time favorite Walt Disney World ride and why? Haunted Mansion. I don't know why. It's just my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> That's fair. It's got that nostalgia factor to it, I think. Yes, yes. So get, keeping it rapid fire, what is your must-visit Disney restaurant that you have to, to go to every time you go on a family trip? It's a little different now that you're kind of there all the time. <laughs> yeah. Let's yes. pretend that you're not living there and say you're going like, you know, once or twice a year, what's your mm-hmm. must visit spot? Ohana. Ooh. And that's, be- that's because that's where our family goes. It's not a Disney trip. If you didn't go to Ohana, Perfect. we don't, we don't go every time now, now that I'm here, but back, back in the day, it was always, that was everybody's favorite restaurant. Awesome. What is a lesser known attraction or spot in Disney that you think everybody should know about? Star Tours gets a lot, gets skipped a lot. I feel like it's always a five minute wait, but yeah, it is. it's, it's always a different experience and they've just added new, new scenes too. So I don't know how people skip it. That, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's definitely a lesser a known one. Yeah, I, I have not. We actually got to the point where we were about to board and then our table got called on Rodeo Roundup Barbecue. So we left without riding it. It was my kids were, were pretty upset about that. <laughs> last, last one. If you had a dream stay, no worry about cost to stay at any Disney resort, which one would it be and why? Polynesian. 
because that is the one resort that I've always said I wanted to stay at. And I keep saying I'm going <laughs> to, I said, I got to stay at least one night while I'm here and have a discount, but it's still expensive. But um, yeah, it is. I, that Polynesian just, I want to be able to see the fireworks and walk into my room. Um, and I just love the atmosphere there. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, a great decision. And Chris, just, just to remind everybody, where can people find you on social media? It is at Chris Allback. So it's just my name on Instagram. That's where I'm most, most of the time. I also have a Facebook and I don't use Twitter. Uh, I have a Twitter. I just never post on it, but so mainly Instagram. <laughs> there you, there you go. Instagram is the spot and you can see all his cool photos. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you have any questions, comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us on social media or via email. As always, we can be found at, at Adventures of a Disney Dad. Chip, where can people find you? At Robinson Dad Life on Instagram. And if you're interested in having me assist in planning that 2025 or even 2024 Disney or Universal vacation, please feel free to reach out. All the links to get a free quote are in the show notes. Our services are free to you, and we'd love to help you plan your next dream vacation. If you have a moment and you could follow, subscribe, like, and review the podcast on whatever platform you prefer, whether it's Apple, YouTube, Spotify, all the places. We would greatly appreciate the support. I The one thing I forgot to mention at the, at the top of the show that I probably should add back in, but I'm not going to, is that we were recently ranked in the top 40 of Disney oh, yeah. podcasts where our show is only six months old. I think that was from Feedspot was the name of the the place that did the ranking of all the Disney podcasts. There were, I think, a thousand or something of them. There's quite a few. I was kind of surprised. So thanks. <laughs> Shout out to the feed spot for including us. Hey, most thanks to our listeners. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That. Thank you guys for the support and for keeping on encouraging us. And we love having guests on the show. Chris, thank you a ton for joining us. And thanks. we look forward to having you back at some point and following along. And, and last if you made it this far, you've got to know Chip and I are going to be at Walt Disney World <laughs> April 5th to the 8th. We're going to make sure that Chris goes out with us at least at least a little bit while we're there, whether it's a meal or to get a drink or something. So we look forward to that. If you see us in the parks, make sure that you say hello and we would love to meet any and all of you. And thank you again for listening and for the support of the show. And we will see you on the next one. See you when we see you.